In this video series I'm attempting to get this 486 based multibus system to boot up into the BIOS. It was uh, working fine, it's in a large uh, CNC mill and um, it suddenly stopped uh, booting up and it appears that the CMOS uh, RAM lost its uh, memory. So uh, replace the CMOS uh, RAM chip uh, with a new one and um, I used the programmer on the bench to enable the real-time clock plugged it in and um, that sort of kind of um, helped the system try and start up we then started getting the uh, video failure uh, beep so we were getting uh, one long beep too short it's AMI BIOS um, that's actually two error codes the first long beep is a uh, video hardware failure uh, indication. The second two short beeps is a separate code and it actually means uh, hardware failure so they're both the same fault both the video um, card hardware failure and uh, so we get one long beep followed by two short and of course it was doing that because there wasn't a VGA card fitted. Now normally this system doesn't have a VGA card installed it will boot up into an operating system that's on the hard disk that sits on the card you can see uh, behind the CPU card boots into that uh, custom Herco operating system and that then uses the serial port to communicate with two serial terminals and it uses that to control the system and display information uh, there is a video card on here but that sends video through to one of the terminals um, but that's completely separate from the VGA side of the system. Being a 486 with a Northbridge and Southbridge chipset, uh, this system does have the capability to drive ISA and PCI slots. But as you can see, there are no formal slots on this. Um, but uh, figured out that the socket that's down behind this new adapter board was um, mostly PCI slot it hasn't got all the pins but it was enough to drive a VGA card figured out what all the connections were made up a small adapter board assembled one and you can see I've got that plugged in here with a VGA card and in the previous video in this series finally got it to boot into the BIOS which you can see on the screen on the right there if that's not the BIOS it's just the uh, startup screen so that's as far as I've got at the moment. Now it's same missing operating system and chances are the master boot record was damaged when the CMOS uh, memory was lost. Not exactly certain the um, way this operating system works. It's not DOS, it's a custom Herco operating system. But almost certainly the uh, hard disk is formatted using one of the FAT uh, formats and so we should in theory be able to uh, use DOS to have a look at that and see if that's intact. So in this video what I'm going to do is actually boot the system into DOS using the floppy drive. I'm not going to install DOS on the system, I don't want to override what's on the hard disk. But once we've booted into DOS we should be able to then examine the hard disk and see if there's anything on it and also make sure that the hard disk control system is working and that the disk itself is operational. Now what I noticed when I first got into the BIOS, you saw us getting into the BIOS for the first time, uh, the real-time clock wasn't set. All I did with the real-time clock on the bench was to enable the, uh, the real-time clock itself, but it had the default uh, time and date so that uh, needed setting. I have actually set the time and date now, at least the date. Uh, but it had auto detected the hard disk and it appears to be the correct one but we'll just check that I'll reboot and we'll go into the BIOS setup proper I'll just move the camera so you can see the screen more clearly so hopefully you can see that so uh, as you can see I've set the time and date uh, or the time I should say and um, I did set a, a time just to make sure that the clock was running and it, to retain this information and uh, the information has been retained so we know that the uh, new real-time clock chip is working fine but as you can see it's auto detected the hard disk we'll just check that 
and as with most of these hard disks the uh, required parameters are actually written on the hard disk itself and so they are correct that's the correct number of cylinders 4092 16 heads 63 sectors per track and the correct capacities so that's all looking fine and um, the rest I'm going to leave as it is for the uh, moment now the rest of the parameters that are in the BIOS are not typical parameters that you'll get for a PC this is remember out of a multibus system so if we go across you can see that we have some fairly standard um, system uh, chipset uh, configuration but uh, down at the bottom here you can see that we have a setup that's specific to the multibus so I'm not going to touch that um, the owner is going to need to adjust that once he gets this back in the machine so that appears to be correct so what I'm going to do now is exit the BIOS setup this after all was the main part of this uh, project uh, but I'm going to try to boot to DOS and we'll have a look see if the uh, hard disk has anything on it at all and also we should be able to use FDisk to see what the partitions are on the hard disk if it's working got a DOS uh, 6.2 floppy in the drive so we'll push that in I'll reboot the system it is set to boot uh, A then C so it should um, try and boot from the A drive first and we should see the DOS startup uh, screen appear once it's gone through the uh, process of reading the floppy disk. It takes a few minutes of course. But, um, so as you can see starting DOS there I can see you can't see it but uh, the light on the floppy drive is on and I can hear it clunking away familiar sound if you've done this a number of times you'll know that um, it makes a very specific uh, noise when it's reading the disk and it does sound like it's doing it correctly and we have the startup now I don't want to install uh, DOS on the hard disk I don't want to mess with the hard disk uh, so I'm going to exit this setup and we should end up at the DOS prompt. So I'm going to press F3. I want to exit setup. And we do indeed have the DOS prompt. So I'm just going to make sure that DOS is actually working for us. I'm going to reach on the camera here to get to the keyboard. And yes indeed we have got DOS running. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look to see if we can um, examine the partitions that are on the, uh, the disk. So I don't want to mess with the, uh, the partitions that are there, I just want to display them. So I'm going to hit 4 and display the partition information. Enter and so we have a FAT12 for the primary DOS partition okay well I don't actually know what partitions the Herco system is supposed to use but the fact that we do have partition information is quite promising and also the volume label seems to uh, make sense it's uh, saying executive underscore one which um, if it had been scrambled would probably just uh, show nonsense or nothing at all so we can now exit this and I'm going to try and switch to the C drive and we'll see if we can read the contents okay we've got the C drive prompt that's promising already and we'll now try to um, see if there's anything on the disk itself which there is okay so this is the Herco operating system I'm assuming which does again lead me to suspect that um, we have a master boot record uh, issue with this so I'm not going to mess with this further um, I'm going to leave this as it is the owner 
I believe has the boot disks for the system so it should now be able to recover the boot sector and once he's done that the system should in theory boot up um, I don't have the disks so I can't do that but it is looking quite promising now that um, we can boot the system we can get into the BIOS uh, we can use the VGA card to run DOS or examine the system so I think he now has all the tools that he needs to get this system fully up and running and uh, he can get into the uh, BIOS and um, I think that's my job done been an interesting one one thing I'd say here is that I believe that whoever took on supposed responsibility for providing technical support for these I think um, they could have been a lot more helpful than they were I think uh, possibly Herco's hands are tied on this I believe they sold the support rights to somebody else so they couldn't pass on information to us um, but if you do have one of these machines and you find yourself in the same situation had the support um, agency been helpful then I would direct you towards them um, but as they seem to be incredibly unhelpful uh, what I would say is if you have a machine and you contact me um, I'll furnish you with one of these and the information for using it and hopefully you can recover your system yourself as I said I'm not treading on anyone's toes here I wasn't provided with any information at all by this um, support agency so they can't accuse me of passing on privileged information because they didn't give me any uh, but um, I don't like seeing um, people essentially scrapping these machines because they can't get support uh, now this card's available it should be very easy for anyone that finds themselves in this situation just swap out uh, the chip in fact you don't even need to swap the chip out you could just put this uh, card in um, and um, see if that is your your fault uh, all you need is the interface card a VGA card and a monitor and a keyboard and um, you should be able to get into your system and as far as I can tell there was only one of the original fixtures available uh, but now of course we have uh, lots of them so uh, hopefully this will prolong the life of these multibus systems if you do need one of these then contact me um, I will be possibly posting a few more videos in this series if there's anything in particular you want to see in relation to this will I still have this system uh, then let me know this is not mine so we'll be going back to its owner soon uh, I'll be discussing with him uh, what he wants me to do now if he wants me to go any further uh, but this is um, obviously uh, been quite a successful project and quite an interesting one